Welcome back, everybody, to Let's Play the Cat Lady. In the last episode, uh, well, we died, and we've been offered this, and we've been offered this illustrious thing. I still can't quite get my head, can't wrap my head around it by the Queen of Maggots. But before we have to, before we can get this illustrious thing, we first have to kill a bunch of people for her, and before we can do that, we have to blow out one of these candles, and then friggin' cut ourselves on the way out, I guess. Strange. The flame seems strong and steady, but there is no smoke. It's a soul flame, probably. What? They left me no choice, Alice. Maybe one day you'll forgive me. Oh, shit! I kind of had the feeling it'd be... See how easy that was? Now, head back to the field. You've got a job to do, Susan. Okay. I mean, I had a sinking feeling that we'd probably end up killing somebody, but damn, like that? What the? How did I get back here? Jesus. Okay. So I guess we just walk forward until we find something to cut ourselves on. an interesting art style and also really weird and clunky animation. Uh, I'm guessing we go past here? I, I don't know. Do we, do we go back here? I mean, really, there's no way to go but forward right now. Yeah, there's nothing we can actually. Nope. Okay, never mind. Back the other way I go, then. I guess I need to go back in the spooky house with the dead deer. Oh, what mess have we gotten ourselves into? I mean, it's definitely spooky enough for Halloween. Still, damn. Oh right! Now that I have the crowbar, I can, I can, I can do, I can do the thing with the planks, and then I can turn the machine on and uh, down crowbar use. Ha! Reach inside the hole. Oh, Jesus! Uh. Oh, oh shit, um, what, well, I'm, 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 oh, oh dear, oh dear, oh god, what, what is happening, oh god, oh god, uh, well, the, the, the machine's working, uh, but, uh, what do I do now? Oh, Mika Mick, you certainly do a good job at making suspenseful music. Jesus. Also, more drum scare credit. make you panic. Uh, 
Oh, uh, episode two. Welcome to the game, everybody. one way to start off the game. Achievement unlocked! Chapter 1 completed! Welcome to Chapter 2. Second first breath. Yes, I do enjoy fine art. Thank you for noticing. There's a certain raw beauty to it that modern painters often fail to recreate. I always wanted to be an artist myself, but it'll be a long time before I can call myself that. I often say that patience are my canvas, That's but my job is more about restoration, obviously. I look at the damaged human minds and bring them back to their former beauty. I'm sorry, I'm probably boring you. No. It's not that. It's just... It's been a difficult couple of days. I'd really like to go home. Of course, and go home you will. As soon as we've done this little assessment, okay, you probably know how it works. I've read in your file you used to be a nurse. Yes, I know very well how it works. You want to check if I'm nuts. Well, I wouldn't use that expression, obviously. But yes, we have to make sure you're safe and figure out how to help you. Also, as a nurse yourself, you know there's always paperwork involved. These forms won't fill themselves. Of course not. Honestly, Susan, you have nothing to worry about. This is just a formality. I could tell straight away that you are not nuts. Fine. What would you like to know? I will answer all your questions. Then I'll go home, take a long shower, and catch up on sleep. Wonderful. Let's see then. Where do we begin? Oh boy, is this gonna be like... Oh dear. She's awake, Doctor. Good evening. It's good to see you awake at last. You're in the Cedar Lake Hospital. My name is Andrew. I'm one of the doctors. Could you confirm your name for me, please? Susan is Susan Ashworth. Susan Ashworth. Hello, Mrs. Ashworth. I'm glad to see you're all right. You're on the ward now. Your condition is stable. I can see your brain functions just fine and there's no permanent damage of any sort. We've checked your internal organs and they're fine too. So You're now. a very lucky lady, Susan. You might experience extreme tiredness and lethargy for a couple of days, but that should soon pass. I would advise plenty of rest now. The nurses on this ward will take it from here. Please let them know if you need anything. Right. Take care, Mrs. Ashworth. Please, don't try to speak. What did you say? Don't worry, Mrs. Ashworth. Your arm is fine. No, no, no. There was nothing wrong with your arm, darling. Now calm down. Would you like me to get you some water? Let me get you a drink. I'll be back in a second. So all of that was just a bad, drug-induced nightmare. Or was it? Probably some weird bastard child of nightmare and reality. Youth games tend to like to go with that option. I'm sorry, Susan. Did I wake you? I have to take your blood pressure. Two seconds and I'm gone. My name is Liz, by the way. I... I'm sorry. I know this isn't very nice. Believe me, I hate waking people up just for this. But being a nuisance is part of my stupid job, unfortunately. Oof, I hate this place. Tell you what, Susan. Can I call you Susan? So anyway, I shouldn't say it, but 
You know I'm going to anyway. You are so lucky. It's crazy. You doing what you've done and her walking in, seeing what she saw. That was a chance. One in a million. Wait, somebody I'm not making in? any sense again, am I? I'm tired. They're working us to death here, you know. Modern day slavery. One day I'll tell them what I really think. I swear I will. Ah, and here it is. You've got the blood pressure of an 18-year-old. Just wanted to say you're lucky, I think. And that I hope you've changed your mind about some things. Got to go, but I'll see you later. You take care, sweetheart, yeah? Aw, she's sweet. More nurses need to be like her. I guess we're just gonna wait more. Can I can I can I get up now? Yeah? No? Jump scare? Jump scare. I oh Jesus! What the f what? Dream. Yeah. Yeah. A really bad one. I knew it. I could see as soon as I came in the room that you were having a nightmare. I guess I shouldn't have woken you up. What was it about? I was burnt alive. Actually, it reminds me of something that happened the other day. There was this woman on the emergency unit, and she really wanted to smoke, you know? But they wouldn't let her, of course. She wasn't well at all. Not just injured, but not right in the head. She was on ten litres of oxygen, through the face mask. She had to stay in bed, she was told. But she wouldn't listen, of course. And as soon as they left, she lit up a fag. That's the whole room by the way. went Don't up in flames, and so did she. I guess you didn't really want to know that, did you? That's just me and my big gob. Typical. I never know when to shut up. What happened to me? Well, how much do you remember? I... I took some pills. And I fell asleep in the chair. I remember how the room kept spinning around me slowly. I felt so calm. And then... Probably shouldn't tell her about the Queen of Maggots. I woke up here, and I saw you. Can you now tell me who found me, and what happened? Well, your body went into a coma. You were lucky she came home and found you. I told you that before. What? Who found me? Your daughter, of course. She called an ambulance. If it wasn't for her, you'd sure be dead now, Susan. My daughter? Yes. Why? Why'd you look so pale all of a sudden, Susan? I don't have a daughter. Whoever she is, she lied. But why would she do that? How should I know? I was in a coma, apparently. So she lied. It doesn't change the fact that you owe her your life. I was fine. I didn't ask for any help. Sorry. Uh, well, they said that I'm gonna be stable, so how long have I been in here? How long have I been here? I was told you arrived at the hospital at 7 in the evening. You had a cardiac arrest in the ambulance. They had to resuscitate you. Your heart stopped beating for nearly a minute, but they managed to bring you back. You went to the intensive care unit, where they gave you a dose of antidote and pumped your stomach. As soon as your condition was stable, they brought you on this ward. It's called Dime Ward. I call it Die Ward. Because all the patients who come here want to die. It's a suicide watch unit. That's why it's so strict. You have to be careful. Nurses here are trigger happy with the sedatives. Oh boy. When will they let me go home? I'm not sure. Probably not today. Maybe tomorrow. 
Look, I shouldn't say that, but you seem like a nice person. I feel like I should warn you. There's this doctor here. They call him Dr. X. He's a chief of psychiatry in this hospital. You won't be able to go home until he's talked to you, and he... He's really good at getting into your head. You know what I'm saying? He will ask you a lot of tricky questions. Oh boy. But he's a really great guy. You should trust him. <coughs> Let's see, uh... Tell me more about yourself. Tell me something more about yourself. Me? I'm a nobody. I'm just a hard-working girl. We all have to pay our bills somehow, right? I rent a room not far from here. There are two other girls living in the house. One is an auxiliary nurse, like me. She's always sick. The other one is a stripper. At least I think so. She's never home at night. Maybe she works at night, like you. Yeah, but I don't leave for work wearing red stockings and heels, do I? No, you're right. You're a real nurse. Not some man's fantasy of one. I used to do all that for my boyfriend. You know, dress up as a sexy nurse and all. Uh. Well, I did it just once, really. He didn't like it that much. He didn't like me that much either. Broke up with me last Valentine's Day. Of all the days, he chose that one, eh? He never told me why, but I don't care anymore. Seriously, if you choose to break up with your significant other on Valentine's Day, you're a fucking douche. This poor girl. Man, uh... Did you see this daughter that I apparently have now? Did you see this daughter of mine? No, sorry, Susan. Apparently she came in the ambulance with you. But then she remembered something and had to go. I think someone mentioned she went in quite a hurry. Of course she did. She was worried I'd ask her what she was doing in my flat. Um, saving your life? Okay, yeah, Do I really fair. have to give her a benefit of the doubt just because of that? One would assume so. That girl is a hero. Maybe real heroes always leave before their identity is revealed. <laughs> or she was a burglar, attempting to steal from me. Hmm. That's a possibility too. Have you got anything very precious in your flat? Maybe. Uh, tell me more about Dr. X. Is he that guy in the flashback? Tell me more about this Dr. X. His name is Xavier Zellman, but everyone just calls him Dr. X. He comes on the ward often, usually late in the afternoon or in the evening. I personally really like him. But you hear all sorts of stories in a place like this, you know. I don't know what to believe anymore. All I know is he's been very friendly and supportive. Some doctors won't even say hello to you. They're called Dr. bad doctors, by the way. usually stops and asks how I am. He knows I have some... problems. He can see I'm not happy here. He actually offered me some free weekly sessions. I think I might take him up on his offer. What are they saying about him? They say he's a big flirt. Nurses, cleaners, patients. He doesn't care. As long as they're wearing a skirt. One girl I knew. Linda. I heard they had an affair. Oh my. Stupid girl. Well, she left. And I never saw her again. Now why do you think that is? Dr. X got her knocked up. They covered it up and quietly got rid of her. Probably paid her some money. I don't know how these things work, but it must have been enough to shut her up. I oh bet he'll be more careful now. Oh my. But I can't really say a bad word about him, personally. Well, one thing. Maybe. Don't laugh, okay? He's got a weird smell. What do you mean? He smells funny. I don't know. Maybe it's just bad aftershave. Or maybe it's something he eats. Oh, thanks for the warning. I'll try not to get too close to him. Now that I think about it, there's something else too. I'll tell you this, Susan. He starts talking to you, and you just open up and tell him everything. It's very odd. I don't exactly hide things from people, but he got some really private stuff out of me. Really private. You know what I mean? 
Things I wouldn't tell my mother about. And we haven't even started those sessions yet. So, be prepared for that. Doesn't that usually sure. mean he's a good therapist, but though? It's a bit too late for me to hide how I feel now, anyway. I think I made it very clear when I swallowed those pills. Uh, in that case, let's just go to bed. I'm tired. Let me sleep now. Fine. I'll see you again. Be careful who you trust here, Susan. They will be watching you. How do I know you're not one of them? You don't. But do I really look like a bad person to you? I... I don't know. Maybe not. I'll see you tonight. Remember what I said. Dreams are just dreams. But when they turn into nightmares, it's good to have someone there to pinch your arm and wake you up. Right? Right. We'll start with a little chat about your childhood. I want you to be as honest as possible. It's important if we want to get to the bottom of your problem. Count to ten and tell me when you're ready, Susan. Uh, I like how almost all therapy sessions are like, now tell me about your childhood. Then again, I guess that makes sense. Now that I think about it, shit. Anyway, let's talk to him. This isn't all about whether you're nuts or not, like we said before. It's about finding what has caused how you're feeling now, and creating a working solution. In order to achieve that, I need to get to know you better. Can we talk about your childhood first? Your parents, when you're a child, your life revolves around them. What was your father like? Did you have a good relationship with him? Uh... I mean... I guess we answered... And I guess we answered based on our actual childhood, so... Honest, I'll be perfectly honest, my dad's a dick. No. He wasn't a good father to me. He was a cold, scary man. Had this wall around him. I could never talk to him about anything. He wouldn't understand. He'd just punish me instead. Maybe it's his fault I got some wires crossed in my head. Because he never loved me. I've always wondered what it feels like to have a loving dad. Maybe it's not too late to fix things between you two. It is. He's dead. Cancer. Six years ago. I see. But it isn't too late for you to put things right in your heart. Have you forgiven him? Why would I? He doesn't deserve to be forgiven. All he did was make my life hell. He destroyed my childhood. He always made me sad. Yes, sad is the word. It's all true, Susan. But the anger you have kept in your heart all these years isn't doing you any good. Don't you think you would be a better, stronger person if you could rise above it all? Aren't you becoming a bit like him, angry and bitter? Aren't those the things in him you hated most? My mind is already made up. I will never forgive that son of a bitch. I hope he burns in hell. Well, if you put it like that... Let's talk about your mother now. What was she like? Would you care to tell me about her? Uh... Honestly... Yeah. She never cared about me. All that mattered to her was the booze, and never me. What I remember clearly from my early years is the image of her sitting by the window. She'd stare at it for hours. Smoking. My dad saw it all, of course, but he was unable to do anything about it. I think he just loved her too much to do anything. They argued a lot. Their fights always take place behind closed doors. It's one way of protecting the child from it all. 
But children always know. At least, I did. I remember every time they fought, I tried so hard to just go to sleep. But sleep never came. No matter how hard I tried not to listen, I couldn't stop. I just couldn't. Okay, I'm beginning to get a better picture. That's enough about your parents for now. Let's take two minutes, and we will talk about something else. Oh, oh shit, we, we, we are here. I need to get out of this place. I hate hospitals. Besides, I really want to go home and forget all about this. What is this? It's a band. We can... Clip on hospital wristband. It's got my name, date of birth, and hospital number on it. Okay. I guess that's all we can really... Meh. Can I... There we go. Uh, gloves rack. Oh, we can take one. Hey, did anybody else used to blow those up and make them look like chickens when they went to the hospital as a kid? Meals are stuck at 10.08. It's probably broken. Or maybe it just needs new batteries. Alright, so... It's the toilet door. Is there anything in the toilet? Hello? I guess I should wait my turn. Alright. Drug chart. List of drugs for food for the patient in the side room, too. I guess that's me, then. I'm on a lot of sedatives, it appears. The stuff they're giving me could knock out a horse, and then give it a headache for a week, too. It could also cause hallucinations and paranoia. How bizarre. Why would they want to give me all that? I'm not crazy, I know that's for sure. If anyone's crazy here, it's someone who put me on all this medication for no good medical reason. Oh, okay. What's in this room? Literally nothing. Uh, no, I don't wanna... No, not now. We got shit to do! Uh... Uh, can you discharge me? I feel much better now. Can you please discharge me? I'm glad to hear that. But, I can't discharge you until Dr. X sees you. He should be doing his round very soon. Please return to your bed and wait for him, alright? I guess... The discharge letter for Anne Burton, currently patient inside room 1. Seems that she's admitted herself into the hospital and is allowed to leave whenever she wishes. Huh. Wait, folders? Miss Mutton, these must be patient files. They're all piled up on the desk. Can I take them? Please do not touch these. They are all confidential documents. I was only going to tidy up. I'm sorry. Are you one of the housekeepers? Why did you dress up as a patient? I just can't stand mess, that's all. And there's no need to be sarcastic. Who's being sarcastic? She's kind of an ass. Uh... Excuse me, where's the exit? It's just down the corridor, ma'am. Thanks. I'll be on my way then. Can I see the discharge letter first? A discharge letter? What for? Some of our patients are under observation and aren't allowed out of the ward. For their own safety, of course. It sounds like we're prisoners here. It's for the patient's safety, ma'am. If you haven't been discharged by the doctors, I'm afraid I can't let you through. May I ask what your name is? Uh, I'll just come back later. I'll come back later. Please do, Mum. We'll be right here. Alright, so I guess we'll probably just go lay back down and, like, talk to Dr. X? Hello? Is 
This must be the patient from side room two. God, doesn't she look confused? You all right? Hi, are you all right? Can we talk for a minute? I can't talk. Please, just leave me alone. Oh, I mean you no harm. I'm trapped here, just like you. Trapped? I don't know. It's just so hard to think without it. But you're a stranger. And you're not one of those lovely nurses either. They look after me so well. I trust the nurses like I trusted my mother. I just want to talk. I need your help. Unless it's mother who sent you. Was it her? Please tell me it was her. Um, yeah, sure. I'm a good friend of your mother. I miss her so much. I can't remember you very well. But you should know this. If you really are a friend, you will know my mother's name. The name that haunts me. A beautiful name. Yeah, sure I do. Now, let me ask you. What is it? Oh, well... What is my mother's name? Hmm... Uh... Elizabeth. No, you're wrong. Leave me alone. Please, just leave me alone. Yikes, alright. So, I guess we'll continue looking for a way out of here next time on Let's Play the Cat Lady. I will see you guys then, and take care.